Hello everyone, it's your old pal Tuna here and welcome back to another video, another studio vlog. And we're actually gonna be in the studio this week. Today we are going to work on a fun, like character design project that I have been commissioned to complete. But before we get into that, I wanted to share a couple of things other than that with you. The first thing is a bit of a, an F or an L I suppose that I've taken. <laughs> if you're not aware, I run a sticker club every month and as a part of the sticker club, I do sticker sheets for my base tier and then I have my higher tier where I do these kind of specialty reward packets where I'll do like prints and extra stickers and I try and make them really fun by having kind of like a little twist on what you might expect from a traditional print club type thing. And so for May, I had designed these cute little CD stickers. The whole thing was, the theme was Ghost Rave, and so I had a lot of musical elements going on. When I originally made the composites for these with my Cricut machine, um, the print quality came out great, the cuts were no problem, but going back to produce the 100 I needed to fulfill the print club demands, I was having a lot of issues with my printer, so I'm having like streakiness, there's like pixelation on the graphic. I tried th like different, four different print, print settings to get it to work and I cleaned the nozzle heads and yada yada and nothing was really working. So my next plan of attack to fix that is to actually, I have to put more ink in it. It's um, an Epson ET8500, which is an EcoTank printer, which means you add the ink from bottles rather than using cartridges. Not gonna troubleshoot that today because I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> That's the problem with making stuff yourself is like, yes, you're gonna save money in the long run, but you're gonna spend a lot of time not only making the product, but troubleshooting the technology <laughs> that is required to make the product. Ah, so what I ended up actually doing was purchasing these Funny enough, my supplier was having a sale on circle stickers, so I was like, great, <laughs> solve this problem with a little bit of cash. But yeah, not always sunshine and daisies, lots of hiccups throughout the week. But on a lighter note, I've got a very heavy, ironically, box here that we should open up together, I think. All right, so what we have here, this is a sticker restock. As you guys know, I've been doing a lot of conventions for the past few months, and the number one thing that I sell is sticker sheets. I frequently joke that I am just 1,000 stickers in a trench coat, and this box is gonna prove that to be true. So what lies inside uh, are restocks of some of my favorite designs that I've sold out of. I don't always restock every design of sticker sheet that I've ever made, just the ones that seem to be selling well or that I particularly like. So in addition to that, I also have these sticker sheets for May, the Ghost Rave that, uh, we were just talking about in the last clip, and the Sheets for June, which is the current cycle, which is a Meowster piece theme. Okay, the first thing here is my supplier always sends me samples, which is really fun because I can add them to my personal collection. So let's remove all of this fun stuff, and they send me all the stuff like this, and I'm like, yes, I do wanna make sticky notes. Thank you for tempting me. Oh my God, Ghost Rave! Yo, they came out perfect. So there's some ghost rave, so cute. When you first start designing stuff for print, it can be hard to gauge how colors are gonna turn out in the final product. But now that I've been doing this for 85 million years, uh, I usually feel pretty confident that they're gonna turn out good. Now, if you're curious, for these restocks, I usually order about 50 at a time. That gets me through a lot of events uh, with the higher ticket, super popular designs like this one. If I'm at a really busy event, maybe I'll sell out of 50 sheets, but super unlikely. Even with the most popular designs, 50 will get me through um, probably two events. And I sell a lot <laughs> of sticker sheets, let me tell you. And I have a buy three, get one free kind of situation, which also drives up the volume that I go through. But if you're just starting out and you're looking to keep stock of stuff, I definitely recommend starting with 10 to 25 copies of something just to test the waters and see how your audience receives it. That counts for online and in-person stuff. Hi, Nori. Oh, yes. Okay, so here's the last of the ghost rave. We'll just start with that. 
And here, this is the Meowster piece set. <laughs> this is so exciting. I have never done a sticker sheet on a white background ever. I've always had, don't eat that garbage, Nori. I've always had colored backgrounds because I think that nine times out of 10, it's the right call to make a sticker sheet just look a little bit more interesting. But because I used so many colors in the actual design of the stickers here, white background was actually perfect. So I suspect that's what's in all of these because I know that I ordered a lot of these. Um, I usually need 200 for each month for fulfilling the patron subscriptions. And then depending on how I feel about the design, like I did feel that Ghost Rave was probably not going to be a banger sticker sheet for me, so I didn't order a ton extra, but Meowster piece, um, based on my market research, <laughs> people like cats, so I usually get a little extra. Speaking of cats, is that your garbage? It's not. That garbage is not for you. And a little bit of extra good, like look at how much stuff they send me for free. There's a ruler in here. Listen, I didn't even know that they could do that. So you know what? This supplier is great. <laughs> okay, let's get this stuff cleaned up before my boy has a buffet. More thing before we stop talking about sticker sheets is this is a supplier from China. I really only recommend you start branching out to those sorts of suppliers if you're buying in ridiculously comically large quantities because otherwise the shipping is really expensive. Ultimately, it's still with the shipping and blah, blah, blah. It ends up being a third of the price of me purchasing them from my local supplier. If you are looking for like a suggestion as to where to start, like maybe you're just beginning designing products and you want to buy some to sell, highly recommend you start looking locally Depending on what country you're in, there are tons and tons of options for stickers in particular because they're very low maintenance to produce. When it comes to more complicated things like washi tape or um, you know, enamel pins, you're gonna have to start looking abroad and you're gonna have to start paying more money. So you know what though? You know what, you know what puts dinner on the table? You know what puts cat food in the cat food bowl? Is stickers. So don't discount the value even though it's very exciting to make other types of products. What do you guys think of this cinematic mode? Is it too jarring of a transition from the last setting? I don't know, I think only things will look pretty cool. Anyway, so now that we're done with stickers and people are continuing to honk outside as they always do, I'm going to jump into some art making, which I have not really been doing very much of this week, so I'll probably be a little bit rusty. I'm going to be working on a commission that is a, it's kind of a branding project, but it's, I don't, I'm not a graphic designer, I'm an illustrator, I, I'm a cartoonist, so I'm working with this client who I previously created kind of like a mascot character for, and she's been using it for a while for her, um, planter 3d printed planter business and she wanted to expand some of the illustrations for that character so she could use it in some of her signage and some more fun ways in her online store and stuff like that so i have three illustrations to do but the first stage of the process is to do some character designing because we only ever did a bust up this was years ago so i'm kind of going to do a little revision to it my plan is to play with a few different styles even though we do have kind of a look in mind i want to be sure to give her some options and as well pick out some fun little outfits for the character to wear. Most of the commissions that I've been doing this year have actually been paintings so it's fun to be able to jump back onto the iPad and do some stuff digitally. I'll do my best to make it entertaining for you to watch too. I'll keep this short. Basically uh, the client sent me an example of my own work to use as a reference for the style and so I created three different versions that were kind of shades of those that particular style that they wanted with the one on the far right kind of being the closest to that style the one on the left being um the more cartoony one and i went with three different outfits that gave three different vibes just to give the client something to choose from because it's easier to communicate with pictures than it is to try and explain with words the direction that we want to go in
Yo, y'all, it's huge. You're the stars. He never goes away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He hangs out he's completely, he's attached to like, you're a bad influence on me. Yes, I am. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Tuesday Tuna here. It is Patreon packing day for me, so that's what we are going to be up to. Um, this is somehow going to be like the printer episode of my vlog. So the first printer, my ET8500, which is my primary higher quality printer that I use to make like stickers and any prints that I make at home. I swapped the ink out for that. It was easy breezy beautiful, but then this printer here, which is my ET2750, oh my goodness, I don't know what happened. I mean, I have my suspicions, but <laughs> basically I can show you this like printer, like it, there's supposed to be yellow lines on the top and blue lines on the bottom of where that, those pink lines are. So something is severely wrong. I gave it a double head cleaning, which is kind of a weird term and it's still, it, it, there was no improvement whatsoever. This isn't the first time that that's happened, so I'm hoping that if I let it rest overnight and then try it again tomorrow, it'll get back to normal because I still have so much ink left in the tanks here that it feels like it would be a shame to have to replace the printer at this point. Um, so yeah, printer snafus. Gonna get these Patreon packages packed up um it's a it's a long process i have documented it a few times in the vlogs before so i'm not going to bore you with too much of the same repetition um but i want to make sure that i get the basic lunch boxes which is what i call the patreon packages out this evening and then i'm waiting on some stickers that i ordered because of the broken printer situation things not printing properly uh, that are supposed to be arriving later today. So fingers crossed and then I can get those ones out. I haven't looked at my to-do list. I'm gonna wait until I'm done with this task and then go in, go in on that. <laughs> to the camera just letting you know before I jump into it <laughs> okay this one is a bit all over the place not gonna lie it is Friday now patreon stuff is shipped and out the door 
thank goodness, and we're gonna be working on more Patreon stuff. So today, my task is to create this idea that I've had for this month's theme, if I didn't mention it already in this vlog, the theme is Meowsterpiece, which is basically cats and art supplies, and so I thought it would be fun if I sent all of my patrons actual art supplies in order to make art. Uh, I think it'll be a great way to enable people who don't have materials to try something new and have some fun, but I also want it to be cute, so I have this vision of using watercolor paper using the Cricut to cut out paw-shaped cards from that paper, and then to create what are called dot cards, which are basically watercolor sample packs to send to all my patrons. I don't know what's wrong with me. Every time I do a big lunchbox, I, for some reason, insist on creating one item in the lunchbox that requires a massive amount of labor on my end, but that's what makes it special. So I am hoping that this is going to work out. I haven't tested it. I don't really see why it wouldn't work out and I actually don't really use my watercolors but I have a pretty big collection so I figure I have enough to do. It's about a hundred dot cards for the number of people who are currently subscribed. They all have to dry somewhere. I'm like where am I gonna put these to dry so that my cat doesn't step in them but that's a problem for uh, later. <laughs> First we gotta put them together. Not only are these perfect for my particular theme this month, but I also think that these dot cards make a super cute gift for like your artist friends. <laughs> you don't need to use a Cricut to cut it out in a ridiculous shape. You can do it by hand or just have it on any sort of piece of card. This is Canson XL watercolor paper, which is my preferred watercolor paper because it's relatively inexpensive. And I just created this paw print shape uh, and then loaded it into the Cricut cutting software. And I think it came out super clean, super cute, because I'm not using the print and cut setting, but instead just the cut setting, I can actually use the full size of the paper, thank goodness, very little gone to waste. Once I have the shapes, I need to select the watercolor that I'm going to put on. Um, again, I don't really use these, I'm just not really a watercolor painter. So I selected a few primaries, red, yellow, blue, a black, and a green, which I end up scrapping. And what I'm gonna do first is just test all the colors out and basically see which of these ones that I've pulled that I actually think will make a nice palette and that I want to include in the set. So I go ahead and tap them all out. This is also kind of me testing how the um, the Tobin kind of paint placement's gonna look. And I just use a little bit of water to in inactivate the paint, I guess, just so I can really see what colors I'm working with. And yeah, I end up choosing two of each just in case I need to get into a second tube by the end, and then this is what the dots look like. I just go ahead and put a little smudge on and let them dry. I'll do a little test painting now, which I will let you enjoy in peace. Thank you. 
came out pretty cute. This really wasn't about the particular illustration, but more about demonstrating the way that the dot cards work so that people understand what it is that I'm offering them. So on that note, if you did make it to the end of this video here and you are interested in picking up the full suite of Meowster piece items this month, be sure to check me out over on Patreon. The support there is basically how I run my business. So if you do like what I do, I really appreciate if you would check that out. But otherwise, you are at the end of the video. Give yourself a pat on the back. If you wouldn't mind also liking the video, you can subscribe for more videos coming uh, almost every single Sunday from me. And for today's comment, I want you to tell me what the name of your pet is, if that's a cat or a dog. Drop it in the comments. I want to know. You can tell me as much about your pets as you want, frankly, and DM me photos. Honestly, I am. My DMs are always open for those kinds of pics. Thank you for joining me for yet another studio vlog. I will be back next weekend. Stay sparkly. Do not let the cruel world dull your shine, and I will see you next time. All right, so the most important thing that we need to go over before we end this presentation is safety. Now, safety cannot be disregarded. We are dealing with wild animals here people and this is a this is a delicate ecosystem and we do not want to interrupt the balance of prey you better than you found it. <laughs> <laughs> now the other half of the same thing <laughs>